welcome back to Spotlight. The Jamnesia Surf Club is located at 8 Miles Bull Bay and is the home of Jamaica's top surfers, past, present and future. Founded by the Wilmots, it provides a space for the development of surfing and surfers through surf lessons, surfboard rentals and repairs and an extensive surf magazine and video library amongst many other surf-related events. We spent our morning at Jamnesia. Check it out. Jamnesia is my home. It is our family's home, I guess. Um, we have a few rooms here that we rent for surfers who travel and want just to need a little space to sleep while they're not surfing. Um, we have a little stage area that we host our jam session, jam music sessions every other Saturday night. We have a little bar area that we sell drinks and rent surfboards, teach surf lessons right on the beach back here. There's also a skateboard bowl in the front yard that we skateboard in and sometimes some BMX riders come and join us and have some fun. Surfing lessons are for everyone, as long as you're not afraid of the water. Once you're comfortable being in the water, you can learn how to surf and we're willing to teach anyone. We teach out here at the back on the beach here or we teach at another beach around the way but most of the times it's right here because the conditions are good. When you do get better and you want to try bigger waves you can walk right down to the other end of the beach and there's you know pretty bigger waves on that end that can give you a little challenge. I really like teaching surfing actually because it helps you to share the passion that you have. Just even the reactions that you see on the students' faces when they catch their first wave and they stand up and they ride it and like the excitement they get, it like rejuvenates your drive and makes you love the sport even more. The last competition I did was the Maca Pro, which is the one, the international event we have here. It's held in Yalas, at Maca Beach in South Haven, St. Thomas. It was a really good event, had a nice turnout, a bunch of guys came in from Trinidad, Barbados and the States and you know, a guy even came from Australia actually, yeah. I ended up winning the event actually. Surfing competitions are a lot different than just surfing by yourself, free surfing as we call it, because it's more restricted. When you catch a wave you have to perform the maneuvers you're doing to kind of suit the criteria that they're looking for. So it's not like you can just drop in, catch a wave and drop in and be like, oh, I want to try a big area, you try a big area and if you land, it's like, yeah, that was cool. But then the judges will be like, okay, did he have speed throughout the entire ride? Did he have control the entire ride? Did his different maneuvers connect well? Did he show innovation in his turns? Did he, you know, that kind of stuff. And did, and did he have a variety of repertoire along the way? So it's like he did one maneuver here and the next maneuver has to be different. If you do the same turn every time, it's going to get a lower score than if you do five different turns and so on. So when you're surfing in a competition, you always have all those things in your mind. With that said and done, when I'm surfing, I don't really think. It's funny because when you're surfing, the wave is always changing. The wind is blowing, there are lumps, the water gets shallower or deeper, so it's always changing and because of that, you can't really have a set plan in your head of what you want to do on a wave. It's kind of ties into why we call this place Jamnesia because that name came from when you're so in tune with the moment that you're surfing and you're just reacting to the wave. At the end of the wave, some of the times because you weren't thinking of what you're doing, you're just kind of doing whatever the wave has to offer. When you finish riding the wave, you can't even remember what you did on the wave because it was just a response to the stimulus of the wave breaking, you know, and it's like someone will be like, oh, that was a really cool wave. And like, really? What did I do? You know? I don't even remember. We're trying to develop the industry, surfing industry in Jamaica and that industry includes tours, having rooms for accommodation, you know, having surfboard rentals, having surf lessons, you know, as far as creating, making surf clothing, shorts and swimsuits and shirts and stuff for you to surf in. And that could be a big industry that Jamaica isn't even thinking about tapping into right now. And we have the waves. We have on average, we have 300 days of four to five foot waves or bigger every year. And that's better than Hawaii. 
Hawaii gets waves in the winter and then it's flat for the whole summer, but here we get waves all year. And you know, it's kind of really great that we have waves that much, but we need to kind of capitalize on it and Jamaica needs to realize that we're sitting on a gold mine as far as surfing is concerned and we need to start taking advantage of it. Surfing is the best sport in the world. If you ask any surfer, they'll say that. It's the best thing in the world. Um, it connects you to nature because when you surf, you realize the effect man has on nature a lot more than in any other aspect of your life. And because you notice, when you go to the beach, you notice everything. You notice the temperature of the water, the reefs. You notice that, oh, global warming, the water temperature is rising, it kills the reefs. Because the water gets too hot, the reefs can't survive in the warmer water. It gets too hot that the reefs can't survive. And then when the reefs die, the waves don't break anymore, you know? Also, when people throw garbage on the streets and throw garbage in the gullies, it washes down to the beach, it gets in the water, it covers the reefs and kills the reef as well. Also, it washes up on the beach and the beach looks horrible and you have to be walking over plastic and glass just to get out to the water. When these plastic and stuff get into the water, the animals sometimes mistake them for food, like say plastic bags and bag juice bags. Turtles feed on jellyfish. A lot of people don't know that turtles eat jellyfish and when you have a clear plastic bag in the water moving around like that, a turtle will see it and mistake it for a jellyfish and try to eat it and choke on it and die. So we're killing the animals and killing the sea by polluting, you know. When you surf, you realize that a lot more because you'll be out there surfing and you're surfing and you see a turtle and you say, oh that's pretty cool, a turtle just swam right past me and there's a dolphin out there. And the reef is, you know, you, when you fall off your board, you're swimming underwater, you see all these beautiful rocks and reef and corals and stuff, and it's really nice, and the waves break right by the reef, and it's really cool, and then you, you start noticing garbage on the beach, and then the garbage gets in the water, and then the reefs start dying, and then the turtles die, you never see a turtle anymore, you never see a dolphin anymore. After a while, the reef gets so barren, you never even see a fish out there anymore, because it's so polluted, the beach is so polluted, and you know, you, you try and walk on the beach, there used to be crabs and stuff living on the beach and there's so much garbage there now, there are no crabs on the beach anymore. You realize a lot of that and it pushes you to be more environmental in everything that you do, you know. And also, it slowly kind of connects every different aspect of nature and gets you more aware with how the world works. That, you know, it kind of slowly makes you into a better person. Wow, my experience was absolutely awesome at the Jamnesia Surf Club. It was amazing. You need to come out and do this. I'm totally going to bring my daughter to come and do this as well because I understand that they um, have kids come and surf after they come and do their homework in the afternoon and then they come out and surf. My first wave, well, it's kind of like you're walking on water. I don't know any other way to put it and I cannot really explain how awesome that could be but you can definitely imagine. What was going through my mind? Well, don't fall, Trish, don't fall. But once you're settling, and after the first couple of times of actually falling, then you move to just trying to get the form right and remembering what he says you should do, and then just feeling it out. My instructor was totally awesome, Aika is the best. He definitely was very clear uh, and told me exactly what needed to do. You know, when I was falling, he told me, okay, adjust this and that, and he was very nurturing through the process. I didn't have to feel like a klutz. So yeah, he was pretty good. I'll definitely be back. I will be back for sure.